me ask you about products. What does a product have to do to get in your in your showroom? And as I mentioned earlier, I'm looking back at a Karastan. There's, there's a lot of Karastan products here. You've got a lot of higher end carpet in the showroom. Yes. You mentioned uh, the designers that you that you work with. What does what does a product have to do to get in your showroom? And what has to happen to a product to get jettisoned from your showroom? Well. Uh, to get in the showroom, it's pretty full right now, so uh, something would have to go. Something would be have to have a problem right now, but we just look for the newest to be green and be renewable has been important, and um, so that's something, you know, that can tickle my ears, you know, something new in that department. Um, but really to get in here, you have to have something that sets you apart, um, whether it be you have a great looking product for a great price that still have, carries a good warranty that we can offer to the consumer. Um, you've got to be very fashion forward, regardless of the price. Some people want what they want, you know, and the price is not even mentioned till the end of the game. And we're not just always looking at a name. We look at the product itself rather than what company it comes from. I've always felt that a lot of people, and my wife likes to watch these uh, HDTV programs, and I hear people say, oh, carpet, that's got to go, whenever they're looking at a house. Correct. And I don't think, and I think people think beige when they think carpet, unfortunately. I don't think people see a lot of the higher-end product. You have a lot of that in here. Um, how do you introduce that to people? I mean, if, if somebody, you know, obviously a designer, you know mm -hmm. what they're looking for. But somebody who maybe isn't necessarily looking for something like that. Someone who doesn't know beige is yeah. on its way out. Yeah. yeah. And um, because that is really what we're seeing. Beige, beige is going. And um, pretty much it's, it's really gone. We're also seeing colors come back. Uh, which really almost surprises me. Yeah. <laughs> but we're seeing a lot of the colors come back. People want to do a room, you know, with a color of carpet. And I think HGTV has brought those ideas in that people are just, they're, they're not scared to go away from beige. Interesting. How about um, pattern goods, uh, goods that have a little bit of texture to them, an unusual look? It seems like, I guess, the design approach is, yes. is the way you have to handle it. It is definitely the way things are going. Um, probably... It's hard to put a percentage, but if I had to put one, I would say 60% of everything I sell is either a pattern or a print. Really? Yes. Really? And that's to designers? Primarily. Well, that's to a, a residential. Now, like I say, I've always felt that most customers, most carpet customers walk into any store in the United States don't even know there, there, there is such a thing as, Correct. as pattern goods. Do your salespeople make a point where it fits to have people at least see it? You've got Dixie back here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of our customers, um, we try to be, for the customers who don't have a designer, um, we really try to, to help them design what they're doing. Um, you know, we, we feel like we try to keep ourselves educated and um you know, aware of the latest trends so that we can step in as a designer and that's something they don't have to, you know, to, there's no extra cost or anything. And we feel like um, we want to show them what the options are. We want to show them what is the most popular, what trend we are seeing mostly. And a lot of our older clientele, they, they're they not into HGTV as we are or they're not into looking at hows, things online. So we do want to show them those products and let them know that that is the trend. So if they're looking at selling their home in five years, they want to put in what's the newest fashion too. You know, regardless of what age you are, you know, if you're thinking of reselling your home, you want to have the, the products in there that are going to be most appealing to any age group. Yeah. Are all of your salespeople more of this design bent or approach a, a customer? In that regard? I, I think so, and um, Kevin might be the one who might be the least, being a male, but, you know, women sort of more have a knack for that, yeah. um, but that's where we'll totally, we'll, we'll tag team that, and if he needs help with design or something, he'll come, and, and I'll help the customer, okay. you know, put together some design solutions, and we just, we, we work hand in hand. If I have something 
that's commercial or needs you know more help with that we, we work together as a team and and I think that's another thing that makes the store really successful we have several different personalities you know that work together yeah. so that really gives you license to show patterned goods where maybe a traditional straightaway sales type would have more right because typically you see a lot of men in this business and um, or you know especially from the Dalton area it's yeah. kind of been a a man's world for many years with a few women scattered in and out but um, I think that the woman's touch when you're working in a retail location like this I think it's very important it's a real advantage isn't it, it is it, it really is I was going to ask you a woman in a man's world but uh, in the retail end it's really a, a, a major asset isn't it it really is talk about your whole approach with your sales team you know, it sounds like you, you work together very well. Um, fewer people, as we mentioned, walk in the front door of any any retail store. It's really imperative that people be converted into a sale. Yes. Um, how do you make sure the salespeople that you have do that and are effective at it and, in essence, keep up to date, as, as you mentioned, with all the right. things that they do? Well, we try to have maintain a really good relationship with with our distributors and our manufacturers. And um, as they come in, we try to ask them what what's the newest thing. You know, is there something that we're not offering that we should be offering? What are you selling the most of you know, in your locations? And we get that advice from them. And um, we try to do any kind of webinars or anything that we can get involved in. Um, we hired a new salesperson. I guess she's been here probably four, month, four to five months, and um, she did not come from a floor covering background. So um, we sent her to the Mohawk University, and we've had her doing a lot of online training um, with Shaw and some of the other manufacturers. Um, we're having her do a, a webinar through Louisville Tile just to get some of that background about, you know, grout and, you know, different sizes tiles are available in, things like that. We have the installers. Sometimes we'll get with them on, you know, what are people doing? You know, what's keeping it? What what can keep us on the forefront? You know, so just I think it's just a just a big mix there. You know, of staying on top of that kind of you stuff. Have regular sales meetings with your sales staff. Well, since there's really three of us who are here in the office all the time, you know, we're within pretty much an earshot of one another. Um, we communicate all day, but usually we'll have a sales meeting and um, we do product demonstrations when I when one of the uh, reps will come in with a new product that I think would be a really good addition uh, before we bring it in I'll try to have the other sales team come in and um, let the rep do a demonstration show us all the you know wh why we would want to carry this product and what the benefits of it would be and then we'll all kind of I mean we'll just discuss amongst ourselves is this something you think you could sell is this something you like you know what don't you like about it what do you like about it we try to make those decisions together since everyone would be selling it. Talk about the future. Um, what things have you thought about in terms of what the store might need to be three, four, five years down the road? I mean, have you thought about non-floor covering products? Maybe I didn't ask you, maybe you already carry those. Have you thought about additional locations? Have you thought about perhaps a different location with a different approach, a cash and carry or something like that. Have you thought of any of those ideas? Is that something? Well, we think of a lot of those ideas. <laughs> um, I don't know about another product. I think we all, we're, we're ground and floor covering. That's what we know. And I don't know that we want to really stray too far from that. Um, we, you know, we do the backsplashes and design elements with the tile, and that's been a stretch for us. And there, that's a place that we've all had to grow our knowledge you know, is in that department, but we wanted to be a one-stop shop for your floors and your, you know, tile and tile falls into that category.